So welcome to a brand new video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to pick a profitable SMA niche in 2020. Now if you're new to the channel and you don't know me, my name is Jaime and I started my agency journey a year and a half ago and managed to scale my agency to six figures in nine months. Now during that journey it wasn't all pretty, it wasn't all fun and games. I actually struggled a lot and my main roadblock and biggest bottleneck was lead generation and signing clients. Not only that though, during that whole journey, I connected with a ton of agency owners and SMA budding entrepreneurs. And the funny thing is that they were struggling with the exact same problem. You know, maybe like me, they had created an amazing uh, team full of A players that could churn out results like no other for, the, for clients. But the problem was lead generation and actually getting clients, right? Because guess what? If you don't have clients, you can't actually scale an agency. And so during those nine months, I really put my head down and tested every single variable that I could when it came to SMA uh, sales and outreach. After a lot of testing and a lot of struggle, I actually started to get really, really good results, landing meetings almost on autopilot and getting more leads than I could actually handle. And so now what I'm doing is I'm teaching uh, on my YouTube channel something that I don't see enough people talking about or talking about well enough, which is the sales and outreach part of SMA. Uh, but really, you know, I love talking about anything related to SMA and that's what I'm gonna do in this video, we're actually gonna be hopping over on my computer. I'm gonna be walking you through step-by-step -step training. I'm gonna be showing you how to actually pick a, a niche that is right for you. I'm not gonna be giving, be giving you this, this cookie cutter uh, tactic or, or this one niche that is absolutely the most amazing. I'm actually gonna be walking you through a very scientific and deliberate process and way of actually finding the perfect, uh, the perfect niche for you. And so let's get right into that. Let's hop over on my computer. How to pick a profitable SMA niche in 2020, step-by-step -step training to choose the right one for you. As I said, this is not going to be a cookie cutter approach. This is going to be a very methodical approach uh, that I think you guys are going to love and, and that I, you know, I haven't really seen anyone uh, talk about it in this way. And so first things first, the mystifying common niche beliefs. Okay. The first thing that, that I want to do is I want to kind of uh, demystify a lot of the stuff that has been said about picking a niche uh, in this entry and, and just the, the whole agency ecosystem. Um, I'm not saying the people that are saying it are wrong. Um, they definitely have, a, uh, they, they definitely have, um, it, it definitely makes a lot of sense. A lot of the stuff that, that, uh, that they say regarding this, it makes a lot of sense, but I think a lot of people either misunderstand it or uh, applied it in the wrong way. And so, uh, you know, something that you guys have, uh, might have heard uh, people say is choose a niche uh, that you're passionate about. Uh, and to be honest, quite, to be quite frank, when I started, I, I kind of had a similar message. But what it should be instead is pick something you know a bit about and have close affinity to, okay? Let me explain this. Now, the first thing that you guys have to consider is that there's a, there's a decision fatigue in both. Many entrepreneurs starting out with SMA get caught up in picking a, a niche because they can't decide what they're passionate about. And, and, and I really don't blame you. Uh, I really want to stress that, right? Passion is a very nuanced thing. And I think it's a word that gets thrown, a lot, uh, th thrown around a lot. And obviously you're not born with a passion for, for a niche, for an SMA niche, for, for an agency niche, right? It's something that Especially if you're, you know, if you've seen SMA in the past year or past six months, and, and you've, you're kind of thinking about uh, starting your own agency, or maybe you're you're just starting out your, your journey, is something that, you know, you, you still haven't given yourself enough time, right? The thing is, you develop a passion for a niche when you feel competent in it, okay? When you feel th that you're good uh, um, with it, right? When you feel like you've really got the hang of it, and you match this with both internal and external validation. Okay, what what I really recommend you guys do is, you know, I'm not I, I could talk to the I could talk about this uh, for hours on end, but I really recommend that you guys read more about this whole whole co uh, passion concept on so good they can't ignore you uh, by Carl uh, Newport. Honestly, pick up anything by Carl Newport, uh, but that book is absolutely essential uh, that you read it uh, because it talks a lot about how th there's this whole misconception about passion, uh, especially in this you know millennial and, and the Gen Z uh, generation. And so what, what I don't want you guys to do is to get me wrong in this. If there's something that you absolutely most strongly believe it, it is your passion, then go with that, okay? Uh, if, if, for example, you feel very, very strongly that you know cars is, is your passion uh, and it's something that you were born to do, um, then absolutely go with that, right? Uh, and, and in this case, I would be wrong. Actually, the problem I see with this belief is once you choose a niche, you, you really start questioning whether it's your, it is your passion or not. Uh, and if you feel a slight pinch of doubt, then you blame the fact that you're not passionate about the niche, okay? Look, as I said, it could be your niche, but what a lot of people do is 
once they get it, they get this niche, and Cal Newport talk, talks a, a, a lot about this. Once they you know they choose this niche, then they really start questioning whether it is, whether it is your passion. And the thing is. What I can show you is you're gonna go through very tough times when building uh, an agency, we're building any business, and so if you if you constantly have this 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 you know this thought um, and this expectation that this niche should be your actually your your life passion, then obviously if anything goes wrong or or if something just doesn't go your way, that's gonna be the first thing that you blame, right? Whereas you should actually just stick through it, and I'll be talking about that in just a second. That actually brings me to the second misconception, which is you're not you're allowed to niche hop and switch niche, uh, niches all you want within the first few months. That's wrong, you know, I really, really don't agree with that, okay? What it should be instead is follow the checklist I'm going to give you today, and once you commit, commit. I'm gonna be giving you actionable advice to choose your niche, but once you commit, commit to it, okay? Because it's gonna be a very thorough analysis of yourself and your future uh, lifestyle, etc. cetera. Uh, and so it's gonna really set you apart. It's really gonna set you up for, um, for choosing the right niche. Once you choose that niche, commit to it, okay? It's all about the work that you put in before choosing the niche, uh, and once you commit to it, commit to it. Give it your all for at least three to four months, no switching, which is completely different to, to uh, what most people say is niche hop within the first few, uh, three months, but then after that, you know, you, can, you kind of are gonna get a good idea of, of what you're passionate about. What I would actually say is, give it your all for at least three, month, three or four months, and don't switch. It literally hurts your soul to get out of bed and work on your agency that maybe, just maybe, reconsider niches. If that's not the case, stick with it. Like I can't, I, I really can't stress this enough. Stick with your niche. If you're not getting results at the start, don't blame the, the fact that it's your niche or that you maybe chose the wrong niche. Just stick with it for at least four months. Okay, give yourself four, four, even six months. I would say, uh, if you're, you know, if you really want to have huge success with this, may give yourself time and don't expect results right from the start because with whatever niche is probably not going to happen in the first few months, okay? Uh, you could get your, your first client in 30 days, 15 days, uh, but that's usually not the case, okay? Let me explain. It's really all backwards. If you're niche hopping in the first three to four months, you can never truly assess whether the niche is actually right for you because look, if you don't give yourself enough time, then you can't really truly master something. And if you can't master, if you're not good at something, if you don't master something, then it's very hard to develop a passion for it. Remember that equation, no time, no mastery, no passion. Now, the second thing is here's my experience with Ecom. I just wanna give you guys a little run through of my actual experience with picking a niche. The thing about me is I never ever changed, okay? Uh, even, when the going got, uh, even when the going got tough, I never ever changed, I never wavered. I did, however, find a sub niche I was more interested in within the broad Ecom uh, category. The thing about e-commerce is a lot of people call it a niche, but it really is it's just a way uh, businesses sell. It's just a pla the, the platform that they sell. It's not really an, an actual niche, uh, especially as, as it becomes as, as it becomes just more and more normal for uh, for businesses to shift more of their operations online um, because obviously there's you know better profit margins. Uh, they have complete control over the, the sales process, over the, the interaction with the customer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but yeah. The thing about me is I never ever wavered, okay? I never ever, you know, thought about changing niche, uh, niches. I, I also stuck with, with one single uh, service. And look, the thing about me is when I say I scaled my agency uh, to six figures in nine months, the funny thing is the, the main growth, I, the main growth I saw in those last two months. If you guys want, I'll make a video on this, but making roughly uh, 4,500, um, when I decided to, to drop out of, uh, out of college and, and uni and really pursue this full time, uh, and then, you know, it took a while for me to, to start signing uh, more clients. Um, I had a bit of a dry spell, but I was really putting in the work and I knew it would manifest just a bit long. Uh, it would manifest, um, you know, later down uh, the road. And then, you know, in, in those, in the eighth and ninth month, I really saw massive breakthroughs, right? In that eight month, I think I signed four clients in one month. Uh, and that's really where I saw ma a massive spike. And, and that's really, that, that really gave me massive momentum uh, to where I am uh, currently. Uh, but yeah, that, that's really the thing about me. And the problem I see with most people is they change way too much. Um, they build half bridges, right? Uh, they niche hop way too much. Uh, thinking that, you know, the grass is always greener on the next niche, right? They see uh, people killing it with e-commerce and they try e-commerce and they, write, they realize that e-commerce is really, really tough um, and, and that you need some time and, and that you need to actually put in the work. Uh, and so, yeah, everything is just a, a, a mess if you're not actually sticking to one thing and riding through the very tough times and sticking with it even when the, the going gets tough. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's really my experience with e-commerce. I just never changed, I never wavered, and that's what gave me massive, uh, and that's what gave me massive leverage, and, and that's how I, um, I reached uh, true success because 
The thing about, you know, the thing about not switching niches as well is once you stick to something for long enough, you eventually get really good with it. And so you're going up against people that are niche hopping uh, and that haven't, haven't really truly put in the work, ha haven't really truly put in the work into one single thing for, you know, six months, nine months, even a year. And, and, and you, you guys are going up against, you know, someone like, me, for example, that, that's putting the work on e-commerce for, for a year and a half now, or, or someone that, that has put in, you know, that, that has, that only reads about e-commerce or, or that only consumes e-commerce content and, and, you know, how to grow on e-commerce uh, on a consistent basis and has been doing so for two years. And guess what? If you're coming up against those people, it, obviously you can lose. Take into one niche for two months at a time, at a time. you're never truly gonna, gonna be an expert at a niche and you're, you're never truly gonna have true success, right? Um, so yeah, that's a, a little side tangent and that's my experience with e-commerce. Now, the problem I see with uh, this belief of, of niche hopping is you never, you know, as I said, you never give yourself enough time to find it enjoyable. Things really take time to fall in love with, right? But once you enjoy what you do, success is almost inevitable. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tiger Woods, they just love the game so much. It wasn't the money, it wasn't the fame, it was true love for the game. Uh, so what I would say is give yourself enough time to fall in love with it, even when the money is not coming in. Just hang in there. It, look, it, it, this cliche, but I truly, truly promise if you just hang in there and you consistently, you know, you make marginal gains every single day, six months, even nine months, stick with, with something and make marginal gains every single day, I can assure you, you're gonna see results. You can see true, true success when it comes to building your agency. So um, I think I, I've, I've said enough about that point. So how do you actually find a niche then? There are two main ways you can go about this. Number one is you can diagnose yourself now, okay? Let me explain this. You really need to see the things and, and really just take a look and judge the things that you have close affinity to. Things you do in your free time, uh, something that you would learn about even if the money wasn't there, even if it didn't pay you, even if you weren't being compensated financially, what is that one thing that, we, that you would learn uh, about that you would do regardless? Number two, look into the future and then work backwards. Ask yourself, what is your ideal lifestyle? What are you working towards? At the end of the day, building an agency is great fun and thoroughly enjoyable when you have patience and put in the work. But you have to realize that no matter what people tell you, it's it, uh, building an agency, building a, uh, an SMA is a lifestyle cash flow business and should be treated as such. Okay, it's not it's not really a passion project. It's something that is going to generate incredible cash uh, upfront. Is it, you, you know you're really going to be able to see incredible returns. Um, if you put in the work and you have a bit of patience, but you don't have to wait out uh, three years or 10 years, like uh, Jeff Bezos did with Amazon, and not turning a profit in, I think, 20 years, right? You're gonna see, you're gonna be able to see results much faster with this, you know, kind of the same amount of work that you put into a, a passion project, and it's very, very profitable, right? So you're gonna be able to see, um, you know, you, you can expect 80 to, to even 90% uh, profit margins, which you can't really see anywhere else, and that's why I love the, the uh, agency uh, model. Uh, and, and the service-based business model. And so those are the two things that you have to look at to determine what is the, the right niche for you. And so let's get into the first one, diagnosing yourself. Diagnosing yourself. The first thing that I want you to do is find your interest likes. Once you know what you like and the things that you have affinity towards, working on it will almost be effortless. That is really the secret, uh, secret to success with anything. It's what to look for to know yourself. And I actually took inspiration from uh, some ovens for uh, this part of this bit. First of all, your YouTube history. Secondly, the browser, uh, your browser history, uh, your search history. Um, thirdly, bookmarks. For example, for me right now, it's, it's a lot about uh, agency building. It's all about uh, personal branding, which I'm, I'm focusing on quite a bit right now. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, a bit of affiliate marketing as well, uh, self-development uh, resources. Um, so, you know, th those are really three, uh, four pillars that I'm really, really focused on uh, right now. Uh, fourth, favorite movie and character. The reason why this uh, in here, and it might, might seem a bit weird, is because um, the, the reason why you like a movie and the reason why you resonate with a character is because you see yourself in them. There's there's just a, a trait uh, that, that you really resonate with because maybe you're seeing in yourself or, or you aspire to be like that person. And different people will resonate with uh, different characters. So yeah, that, that's, the, that's the fourth thing that I want you guys to consider. Number five, books you read. Number six, people that you listen to. Uh, for example, it could be the po uh, podcast that you listen to. It could be the, the, the different gurus. Um, you know, another good thing is, instead of YouTube history, look at the people that you've subscribed to uh, on YouTube. Um, that's a good indication as well. Now, number, what is this? Uh, seven, what are you always talking about? 
as your, you know, your, your, fr your, your close circle, as your family, as your friends, uh, as your wife, your, your, you know, husband, your girlfriend, uh, your boyfriend, uh, as the people that you speak to on a daily basis, what you're always talking about and uh, what someone can shut you up about. Okay. Um, for me, for example, it's just, you know, personal development, um, you know, personal development, business, uh, anything that has to do with, you know, bettering myself every day, uh, anything that has to do with even spirituality, I I'm always talking about that. Uh, and there'll be friends that I literally, you know, I'll sit down with and I'll have, you know, I'll have talks with them uh, hours on end about, you know, maybe just spirituality, right? So those are some of the topics that I gravitate uh, towards. So find the ones that you're always talking about. Um, you might not be aware of those uh, right now. And so I truly recommend that you go and ask uh, the people that I actually speak to on a daily basis and they'll be able to tell you uh, right away. So yeah, and lastly, expenses and investments. What do you actually spend your money on? Um, this will give you a, a good insight into what you actually value, right? Um, because money at the end of the day is just an, an exchange of value that is diagnosing yourself. Now, the second thing is look into the future. What I want you guys to do is pinpoint the dream lifestyle that you wanna have. Um, if you've got into SMA or you're looking at uh, building an online business, it probably means that, uh, that there's, there's just this vision uh, that you have uh, and that you want to get to uh, in the future. And so different niche niches suit different lifestyle, lifestyles, right? For example, with e-commerce, you can have your agency be completely remote as all client touch points can be done via video call. Also closing them can be done over the phone. Uh, and so for example, if you're doing e-commerce and, and you really want to travel the world, I really see that as, as, as a viable option. If you're doing something like, for example, uh, local businesses uh, where you know to sign them, you kind of need uh, physical touch points, and you know, maybe even if they, they're required to, to meet a face to face with you, then that's probably not the right um, the right niche for the right life for the lifestyle that you want. You know, you might think that everyone wants to travel the world, everyone wants, wants to be a, a digital nomad, uh, but there's also you know a lot of pros about you know having um, there's a lot of pros about having a local clients. Um, you can get you know results much much easier. Um, you know, you, you get perks, for example, uh, that you're interested in, et cetera, et cetera. So second thing is ease and skill. Different niches pay different types of retainers. Restaurants, uh, for example, will usually pay lower retainers than e-commerce businesses, but it'll be easier to get, uh, to get them results and to sign them. You might think everyone wants uh, massive retainers and, and to have, a, you know, the, the fewer clients, the better. In my, in my experience, that's, that's really the best way to build a business. But with e-com e clients, there are, all, there are also a lot of uh, you know, th there's a bunch of negatives as well, right? Uh, for example, if you don't have a, the, the right team in place yet, uh, what I can assure you is for e-commerce uh, for e-commerce clients, it's a lot harder to get them results because there's a lot of uh, other moving parts that are not just paid ads, okay? And, and a lot of marketers, unfortunately, uh, neglect that, right? There's, you know, uh, landing page conversions, making sure you have a, a well-defined funnel. You're actually held accountable to uh, the conversion, right? The purchase, you're not just held accountable to, to sending them leads and, and then having, you know, and then and them taking care uh, of those leads. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's definitely pros and cons to every single niche. Um, if, for example, it, what I can tell you as well is restaurants are probably easier to sign than e-commerce clients uh, because you know you can just pop in uh, to a um, a restaurant um, if you if, if you're kind of doing that outreach. Uh, and that face-to-face -face interaction is a lot more valuable than you know sending them a, a, a message via LinkedIn and then having them hop over uh, on on a video call. It's certainly very, you know, if done well, it's certainly very doable, uh, but it's just different approaches, okay? So that is look into the future. You know, just to close it off, what I would say is keep these two things in mind when you're choosing a niche, but ultimately remember this, as long as you stick to it, as long as you stick to one niche, you will not only be more likely to enjoy it, but you will get results faster. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this style of video, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash the, the like button. It really helps out a ton with the algorithm uh, and it helps out push my channel to, to a lot more people. So go ahead and do that. And lastly, if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. There's so much content that I'm gonna be putting out in the upcoming days um, regarding you know, SMA, outreach, sales. There's a ton of com content coming out that you really don't wanna miss. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and as always, guys, I hope your agency journey is going well, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace.